Are you here? Okay. Hey, we got something really special today, okay? Now, this one went out on the radio years and years ago and has not been heard since, okay? So, we take you down to the Isle of Key West for a good look at Boogie Woogie Blues Ragtime and Barrel House piano player Barry Cuda, okay? Now, one of Key West's most respected acts... Barry Cuda has been bringing the piano rock of Louisiana and the blues of Chicago down to the Florida Keys. Okay, sounds more than okay to me. Now, this interview was recorded outside B.O.'s Fish Wagon in Key West. We invite you to tune in for a great interview from Barry Cuda. Now, this has been digitally remastered for your listening enjoyment, okay? Hey, if it's okay with you... Paul wanted me to mention that he read the story Gloria Naylor's Island by author Robert McCready. Paul recommends it. Hmm? Okay? Sounds more than 100% okay to me. Okay. You can be a patron of independent interviewing and the spoken word. Okay? Just go to www.thepaulleslie.com slash support. And we thank you for listening and supporting. Okay? So, if it's okay with you, we're going to go ahead and start this episode. Okay. We're outside of B.O. Fishwagon. I'm here with the one and only Barry Kuda. So, welcome to the show, Barry. How you doing? My first question is, you were mentioning that you were uh, from Pensacola right. in the show. You play a lot of music from uh, New Orleans. Mm-hmm. How did you How did you get uh, interested in that kind of music? The kind of music you play. I I I grew up with it somewhat. I'm a child of the fifties and sixties, so I was I grew up with the British invasion rock and stuff, and that's some of the stuff I got turned on to. Uh, secondhand by the Beatles and Stones, but also I was, there was a cool radio station in Pensacola in the 50s and 60s. I was playing a lot of the New Orleans R&B, Carman Henry and, 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 uh, Fat Stomino, but also Joe Tex and stuff like that. Uh, it was called WBOPW Bob, the black spot on your dial. So, uh, I listened to that like this because the music always seemed to have a lot of integrity. And a lot of great crews and feet. Where did you learn to play piano from? Uh, pretty normal childhood. I, I started uh, with lessons when I was a little kid, you know, regular classical lessons and stuff. And I just slowly wandered off into the blues and ragtime and boogie woogie and stuff. That stuff that interested me when I was stuck a little lagging interest in junior high. And then, uh, yeah, I got into that music and did the garage band thing and, and uh, really got into ragtime in uh, college. And then from that, started getting into all the other different old styles like Stride and Barrel uh, House Blues and Boogie Woogie. And got a, had a chance back in the 70s to go around and sit at the feet of some of the, uh, the greats, the originals who are now dead, like Little Brother Montgomery and Professor Longer and James. Booker, uh, Sonny Lance Slum, Champ Jack Dupree. I took lessons from a guy, Naki Parker, John Naki Parker, who was uh, with the White Crust of Doughboys, and then the, uh, the Texas Blakeboys, Bob Wells, doing Western Swing. He knew a lot about the old black rhythm and blues, too. So I got to you know, see some of the graves, and then I was also studying the chorus records and anything I could to pick it up. Have your musical tastes changed at all, or has it remained relatively consistent? Uh, kind of. I like my what I perform and what I listen to are two different things. I really like this this what we've been playing tonight here at Bo's. You know, a lot of it. It, it depends on the musicians I'm playing with. With Chief Billy on arm, on Monica and Nick on the drums. He's a real bass oriented or uh, boogie uh, blues oriented drummer. So we're doing more of you know uh, the Blues stuff like uh, what we've just been talking about, so both New Orleans and Chicago stuff. But 
if I'm playing solo, I, I do some more of that rare stuff, like on my lonesome mama CD, early, early stuff, stuff that has more space in it. Uh, but if I'm playing, working with another group, maybe I'll, I'll do even some uh, world music. Events. Who out there would you have to say, as far as piano players, would you really have to give the respect to? Living or dead? Both. Well, Professor Long here, just because of the rhythm and he's doing. I also like a lot James Booker, although he was kind of, he had rhythm, but he's really more Baroque than Professor Long here. Uh, I like Jimmy Yancey a whole lot. Uh, because of his inventive bass lines. I think John Cleary today is really a monster. You're familiar with Cleary? Absolute monster, gentlemen. Um, but, and of course, the guy, who, the, the, my my idol right now, the guy who's the best, I think, is the widest and most versatile would be Henry Butler, the blind guy. Uh, but I love, you know, like I like Thelonious Monk, you know, I can't play like him, but <laughs> to listen to that. And, uh, I gotta agree with you on Henry Butler. Uh, he's a master skills. So, how did you end up in the Keys? I was at Wits End. My band was ending. Uh, my relationship and broke up. I was at the end, end of my rope, so I figured I might as well go to the end of the road. <laughs> so, I came down here. I had been touring a lot for the 10 years prior in Europe, mostly based in Tampa Bay, but touring all over Europe. Making ribbon money over there in the band group. Up. So I came to Key West for two weeks and I was going to go to New Orleans and really try to park and put my dues in there. Because I'd usually just go there for about a week at a time, you know, and soak up the, the culture and the knowledge as best I could. Uh, so anyway, I got down to Key West and uh, I figured, it, you know, the audience is always changing here. I'm not really big on the road, I kind of like going home. Yeah. I like the idea of home, and uh, and I ended up getting married and having a kid and a, and a dog. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to tour when you got all that stuff. So I, uh, and Key West is great because the audience doesn't turn. You always have a fresh crowd. They're ready to party, and the money's good. Nobody's going to hear about you. Because <laughs> you're so off the beaten track. Yeah, but that's okay. You know, I'm hiding now. <laughs> but I'm a... Uh, the music I'm playing would be hiding out anywhere. You know, it's not exactly commercial. <laughs> I was asking Pete and Wayne, who out and who in Key West would you say is one of the best musicians? And they said, probably Barry Kudo. Get out, really? They said Barry Kudo and probably Mike McLeod. Musicians, really? That's interesting. And so yeah. those, those are the. So who in Key West? What'd you say? Well, I think entertainment and act wise, I think Pete and Selena hold head and shoulders <laughs> above everybody, even though they're kind of raunchy and self more. Uh, just the truth element, the surprise element, and just the entertainment level. I think Pete and Selena out there. I think musically wise, my probably two of my favorite musicians in town would be, uh, well, a few of them would be uh, Dave Burns, jazz pianist, um, uh, Kenny Fradley on um, trumpet, who I work with. His phrasing is amazing, and his linear uh, thing he does on the solos. He's he's uh, recorded with U2 and and uh, at Blondie and at Dizzy Gillespie, lots of people. I mean, to be able to trumpet player and play with Dizzy Gillespie is pretty <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty big. Uh, the other guy is is uh, really good. Uh, is he's kind of a. a, 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 a um, this guy, his name's Michael Gillis, and he's a monster guitar player and an okay bass player. And he is, he played uh, with Doc Severinsen. He was uh, Dinah Shore or somebody's like that, a, a music arranger. For um, I don't quote me on that, but the guy's a monster. But he's he's kind of falling off the map. He used to play, teach at the University of Miami, uh, and he's real good, just sporadic but real good. And uh, there's there's several other players around. Yeah. In your album, the, the Lonesome Mama album, you uh, you showcase a lot of the old sound. And there's another cassette I have of yours. It's, it's an old cassette, mm -hmm. and you do uh, Jelly Roll Morton, uh, Mammy's Blues. Mm -hmm. 
would you say that the old songs are on a kind of a level, the higher level in the songs that are being written today? I don't know, you know. <laughs> People ask me why I do all mostly old songs. I heard Bob Dylan quote, you know, on his, his XM radio. He says, he says we got to we got to an email from Dave. Dave says, why don't you play any new songs? Well, Dave, there are more old songs than there are new songs. That's true. <laughs> uh, I like the uh, I like the beautiful old stuff. I like pulling these old gems out of the air, you know, that pe- people haven't heard. And like on the Lonesome Mama CD, I really like playing uh, solo like early in the day or even late at night, just like these little sparse kind of slow blues. It's like nowadays you just what people consider the blues is more like Stevie Ray electric and stuff and and I'm completely wrong about that. I like that stuff, you know, but to me like if you can give it a lot of breathing room. Well, the other the guy I guess that I didn't mention before that was one of my heroes in terms of just feeling the blues and, and having the space and the voice and everything with the Otis stamp. And uh, if you've never heard his solo stuff run by it. Good Morning Blues, I think this is, this is a CD, and it's just one guy singing, and it's like, it's the whole idea of less is more, and really you know, making it sound like you feel it, <laughs> you sing it. This may sound like a dumb question, but in the song, when you say, started reeling, started rocking, what is reeling? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was listening. I've listened to it. And I'm yeah, like, it's a fun song. Right. I like singing along with it. Yeah, like, I'm not sure. What the hell's that about? Uh, well, he's like when you're reeling out of control, you know, it's like you're uh, kind of off balance, going backwards or something, but you catch yourself just in time. <laughs> out of your tunes, what should you say is your favorite to play? Oh, I, I don't know. I get that all the time. You know, but, you know there's no real one favorite. Probably. When I'm playing stuff that I enjoy and I have a good crowd, then that's the next song. You know, that's the song I'm playing. Really. I, 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 I'm doing another CD along the Lonesome Mama. I've got other, you know, Irons in, in the Fire, too. I'm doing something with this new group, Honey Mouth, with Raven Cooper, the vocalist, and Kenny Kravitz, the trumpet player who's in town, I told you about, and uh, Richard Brooks, old older guy, who, uh, who's down here just in the winter. He's, he, he's on Bob Dylan's blood on the tracks. And he's got the John Strong all known for about 15 years. And he's a New York session guy. He's down here. Richard Crooks. Great. He doesn't drum. He paints, you know. He paints with, with rhythm. And it's just wonderful to work with him. And then there's another great guy named Bubba Low Notes. He's a great bass player. He does string bass. And he's, he's got like three, four octave range vocally. And harmonize. So quit, quit, I'm doing that and you know, as well. So between that and my solo stuff, it keeps it interesting. <laughs> so with all this, how do you have time to spend time in France? <laughs> uh, uh, well, work as much as you can and you know, then save your money and go home, not don't blow it, and get over there. I'm, I, I'm hoping to get over there. And uh, I, I played a lot on Scandinavia, and I've got a little bit of following. And I, I want to get over there, but I'd like to develop France now that I'm actually on a home over there. Down near the Riviera, about an hour and a half from the Riviera. And, you know, there's old money on the Riviera. <laughs> so when you're not performing uh, and not hanging out in France, <laughs> what do you like to do? Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of like fun. I well, I live down in the Keys, so I fish some. Uh, I, you know, I just like water sports. I, I, I get my exercise by riding my bicycle. I got a real nice 21 speed road bike that I ride around here. And over in France, my place in Provence, I got it and a mountain bike. So I, I, I'm still a kid. I love bicycles. Uh, I, I've got a couple of kayaks. So I go out and kayak, ask a kayak with friends, uh, get a couple of body strength, swim in the canals, fishing the boats, uh, you know, anything water oriented on them too. And uh, I don't have a TV. I've got a DVD player on my, I don't know, but uh, I don't watch TV. Like, I read a lot mm-hmm. and uh, I get used to the internet, you know, the most kind of news and stuff. I, I finally joined Netflix. So. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you uh, ever play with John Jarwing anymore? No, I don't. I haven't, I haven't played with him in a while. He's a great drummer, huh? Yeah. Nikki, little Nikki, uh, I, I guess they're not together anymore, but she's got a great voice. John, we I did a tour with him in 87 in, in uh, Europe, and everybody kind of lost their place when he made a mistake. He only made one mistake in five weeks, you know, where he dropped the beat, and everybody's kind of, huh? <laughs> One of your songs that I was, uh, a lot of my listeners would probably be offended by it, but I was tickled to death when I heard it, was your bacon, shrimp, and tomato. Uh, Buffett's fair game, huh? Yeah. And so I just wanted to know, what was the bacon, shrimp, and tomato? What does that mean exactly? I don't know. I think it came from some like National Lampoon something in the seventies. It was like a joke. It was a joke name for blood, sweat, and tears because here these white guys <laughs> like how much have they felt the blues? They, and they're millionaires by the time they're thirty years old <laughs> and they're doing blues. So we used to call blood, sweat, and tears bacon, shrimp, and tomato. So then when I uh, you know I wrote my spoof of Bob, but that seemed instead of uh, you know that seemed a good intro to it. Baby shrimp and tomato. Holy stinker, let's sail away. <laughs> Didn't you say that he was in the audience one time when you played that? Was... I don't think he was, but Captain Tony was in the audience and Captain Tony liked it and laughed. But if Buffett was there, he wouldn't have liked it. <laughs> you don't think so? Not Captain Tony wouldn't have, but you know, if it's Buffett, I don't know Buffett. You know, I hear stories. So my last question to you, since this program goes out all over the world. You've got these fans in different countries. What would you, Barry Cuda, like to say to the world? <laughs> uh, that, what would I say to the world? I'd say lighten up and uh, practice peace. I feel like an aging hippie, you know, but it's like uh, in these times with Iraq and stuff, it's kind of like uh, if the American public and, and everybody else should be knowing what's going on and if you're concerned, if you're not concerned, you're not paying attention. And if, what if they gave a war and nobody came? <laughs> I'm a pacifist. Well, Mr. Kuda, I certainly appreciate you taking time and talking to me. All right. Well, there's an ambassador from the art. It was my pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Take care. Thank you for stopping by today. If you enjoyed our program, consider telling a friend about it. The Paul Leslie Hour is made possible through people just like you. So you want to keep the show going, right? Go to thepaulleslie.com. That's thepaulleslie.com. Click on Support the Show. And thanks to everyone who contributes. Performance of the intro music is courtesy of John Primerano, the entertainer. Written by Scott Joplin. End credit theme music is courtesy of John Primerano. The traditional song, Corina, Corina. Your announcer is Dan Gold. Hey, that's me. The show is hosted and produced by Paul Leslie. And we'll see you next time on the Paul Leslie Hour. <laughs>